Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Thank you so very, very much for joining us today here in the broadcast. If you can right now, reach over and pick up your Bible. Mine sits open to a new place. Mine Bible sits open to the book of Galatians and chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Today we want to kick off a new study in that book of the New Testament. And let me begin with this question. How would you introduce Jesus to someone who who does not know him. How would you do that? Well, that kind of an introduction we call by the terms soul winning or evangelism. Every single believer, every single one is called to introduce Jesus to those who have never met him before. Many of us have discovered that some people think they know who Jesus is, but much of their information is inaccurate. We need to be growing in our skill in telling the, the lost about who Jesus Christ is and why he died on the cross. Okay, now that we've got settled, but let me now change the focus of my question. Here we go. My new question is this. How would you go about introducing Jesus to those who have already met him? Now, you may think that's a strange question, and perhaps it is, but nonetheless, that is exactly what we're going to find happening in the opening verses of Galatians chapter 1. By now, my curiosity is piqued. Why in the world would God move the Apostle Paul to feel the need to introduce Jesus to those who are already believers? That question needed to be asked and answered not only then in Paul's day in the first century, but frankly, we need to ask it and answer it anew and afresh today in the 21st century. That's our goal. You get your Bible, Galatians chapter 1. You join me, please, right now. Get something to write with and write on, would you please? For a couple of reasons, I want you to take some notes from the Bible study as well as jot down how to contact us. And here's the reason for that. In my hand right now is one of our gospel tracks. Remember the word track is spelled T-R-A-C-T. We're talking about a gospel presentation. A gospel track is a written, clearly written presentation of how to know Jesus Christ as your Savior from sin. It's put together in a format simple to carry, easy to carry with you in your pocket or purse. We here at Bible Tracks Incorporated do nothing except publish gospel tracks in different languages and we give them away around the world. In my hand right now is one of the tracks that we publish. This one's entitled, Ready to Die. Ready to Die. It's a true life story about a young man named James Dunkley, who, on a second tour of army service in the country of Iraq, was killed in the line of duty. But man, did his life ever touch thousands of other lives with the gospel. This title, Ready to Die, was the motto that James Dunkley took for himself when he was 14 years of age. 14. He even designed a logo for his life, and we have that here in the track. If you're looking for a track to minister to men, to minister to people in the military presently or past, if you're looking for a, a track for young teenage boys, here's a good track for you, Ready to Die. It clearly lays out the gospel, and it clearly talks about living a life pleasing to Christ. I want to give you this track. I want to send it to you absolutely free as part of a sample packet of all of our English gospel tracks. Now, to do that, you will need to be ready so that at the end of the broadcast, when my announcer gives to you some methods by which you can give to us your name and mailing address, if you'll jot that down, communicate with us, we will send you, as I said, free of charge, a full complement of all of our English gospel tracks. If you'd like to know more about using gospel tracks, you can contact us and talk about that as well. All right. You plan to do that. Do that today, please. 
Come with me, please. Galatians chapter 1. Let me begin by reading the first five verses, the first paragraph of the book. Here's what it says. Paul, an apostle, not of man, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, as I said at the beginning of the broadcast, the Apostle Paul is introducing not really himself, but he's really introducing Jesus to people who have made a profession of faith in Jesus Christ. And we're going to see as we go through, these are people that he's going to call brethren, believers. I take them to be true, honest to goodness believers. But the question is, why does he introduce Jesus to them? I haven't read verse 6, but verse 6 will see, tell us when we get there, that there were people being removed from Christ. Well, what does that mean? Well, we'll discover that later on this week. But for right now, and it's quite obvious that there were some confused believers living in Paul's day. They needed to be reintroduced to Christ so that they did not get pulled into some doctrinal error. Now, I'm not sure how aware you may be, but doctrinal error, bad teaching, uh, spiritual teaching, has not only sprung up in the past in good Bible preaching churches, but it continues even to this day to pop up uh, in our era. Let me give you four words, all beginning with the letter R, that I'm going to be using to walk our way through these verses, verses 1 to 5. Here are the words right now. The first one's going to be resurrection. I'm going to come back to that one in a moment. We're going to use the word ransom. We're going to use the word reason, and then based upon verse 5, a result. But right now, the word resurrection, we're going to find it there in verse 1, the word that we're we're told that God the Father raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, this verse does not give us a whole doctrinal layout of the teaching of resurrection. All we are told here in the verses 1, 2, and 3 are two basic things. First of all, the fact of the resurrection. The fact of of the resurrection. Secondly, that the father is involved in the resurrection of his son from the dead. Now, as I said, Paul does not define the reality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. All he does is state it as a fact. The only other truth that given to us about the resurrection here is that God the Father was involved in raising his only begotten son from the dead. I'll not prove the fact that Jesus and the Holy Spirit were also credited with uh, doing the resurrection work. I simply state that statement here so that you know that I know that there is a lot more resurrection information found in the scriptures. But why in the world does the Holy Spirit move Paul to tell us about the resurrection? Why is this truth critical in introducing Jesus to believers? Well, let me give you three answers that I find here in verses 1, 2, and 3. Answer number one, he talks about the resurrection because the resurrection gave Jesus power or authority over people. The Apostle Paul says he was made an apostle, a sent one. He was made that by Jesus. Well, who in the world gave Jesus the right to make some people apostles and direct other saints to fulfill other tasks? I'll tell you it was. It was the resurrected Lord. He gave, he alone has that authority. Answer number two, the resurrection gave Jesus the power, the authority over churches. Do you see verse 2 there? It says this letter was written from all the brethren with Paul to the churches in Galatia. What this letter states has authority in the churches. Why? Because it comes from the resurrected Savior. Answer number 3. 
The resurrection of Jesus gave him power, gave him authority over all of our circumstances, your circumstances and my circumstances, your present circumstances, your past circumstances, and the circumstances you and I will face tomorrow, next week, and next year if the Lord tarries. How do I know this? Look at verse 3. Here's what it says. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Due to his, Christ's resurrection power, he can provide to each and every saint the grace to handle any and all situations. And not only that, Jesus can give every saint peace in the midst of whatever storm, whatever circumstance you find yourself right now that I find myself right now. Now, before I get done today, let me go back and remind you of the three R words. We're not going to get to all of them today. I talked about the resurrection. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk about the ransom looking based upon verse 4. Our resurrected Savior first gave himself as our sin payment, our ransom. We're going to talk about, again, from verse 4, a reason. The word that is used in verse 4, a reason. He died and rose to deliver us. And then we'll see this week the word result based upon verse 5. Due to Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, he gets all the glory now and forever. Amen. Now, obviously, we're not done talking about this introduction of Jesus to believers. Tomorrow, I want to pick up with my other words that begin with the letter R. But right now, I want to address you and I who know Christ as Savior. Have we forgotten who Christ is? He is the risen Lord. Oh, we talk about him as our Savior, and let's not stop doing that. But he arose from the dead. Resurrection truth is part of the gospel, part of the good news story. But because he arose from the dead, not only do we know that his ransom payment was accepted by God the Father, but he now sits enthroned as the head of the church, and he has the right to direct the churches, and he has the right to direct the Christians in in those churches. He has the right to tell us what to do, what not to do. He has the right to direct our worship in our churches. He has the right to direct our marriages. He has the right to direct how we raise our children, how we conduct ourselves at work, how we conduct ourselves on the church softball team. He has the right because he is the risen Savior. Now, so many Christians today, they want Jesus as their Savior, but they don't want him telling them how to live their life. I'm sorry, dear friend. Did you die and rise from the dead? When you do that, then you can direct your life. Until then, you belong to Christ, the one who died, was buried, and rose again. Dear friend who does not know Christ as Savior, if Christ sits enthroned in heaven over believers— he also sits enthroned in heaven, and he will return one day to judge those who do not know him as Savior, and that judgment will be fierce. He will not come as meek and mild as a babe in a manger. He's going to come as King of kings and Lord of lords. He has vesture dipped in blood. He will come with judgment and a sword in his hand. And friend, if you do not know Christ as Savior now, you're in a heap of trouble. You must receive Christ and his loving offer to save you from all your sin, become part of his family, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and then thou shalt be saved. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. Again, our phone number is 309 828 6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.